right. Welcome back, everybody, for the next episode of Great Starts Dog Training, our podcast here geared around providing insights and feedback and any sort of resource that we can provide uh, individuals such as yourself for their dogs or just the world of dogs. Today's episode, we are going to be discussing when you should start training your dog or when you should start training your puppy. And this conversation is really kind of geared towards, you know, two different sections, right? Either you just got your brand new puppy, um, whether you got it from a shelter, whether you got it from a breeder, you know, we're not here to discuss that, or say you have uh, just rescued an older dog or an older dog was just surrendered to you. You know, when does the training begin? So we're gonna talk about, you know, age, duration, um, different training areas of focus, any sort of tricks that you could do, and then some specialty training as well that you could dip your toes into. So to start right off the bat, what we're going to talk about is the age. And, you know, spoiler alert, shocker here, it does not matter what age your dog is for you to start training or to kick back up with training. Say you did training with your dog when you first got them, but several years have gone by and you know, you'd know you like to either refresh their memory or you'd like to get them better than where they're at now. You can start right away. There, there is no age limit to training. Now, there is an age concern on the different areas you can take your dog for training. Say if you have a new puppy that has not received their necessary vaccinations, keeping them safe from the numerous um, illnesses that could really affect them, don't take them out to a public place, you know. Or if you do take them out to a public place, keep them in your car, keep them in your arms, put them in a safe and sanitary cart to let them observe, you know. There are ways that you can get around it, but don't put them on the ground. Don't put them in a spot where you see, you know, recent animal feces, right? You don't want to risk getting your puppy sick with uh, parvovirus or any other illness out there that could ultimately hurt your puppy and hurt your pocketbook. So there is no age limit to training with your dog, working with your dog. Your dog could be a brand new puppy or your dog could be 12, 13 years old, even more. There's no limit. Every dog is receptive to consistent training. Now, that's the key word there, consistent training. If you start training with your dog and, you know, say they're just taking a little bit to get it or understand it, you got to keep going. You got to push through that boundary. You got to stay consistent if you want to start to see the results. So age, there is no real age limit at all. There are certain stipulations and precautions that you should take depending on the age of your dog to make sure that they stay healthy, but you can work with them at home doing a number of activities. When you feed them, use their food as their reward. If you got a very motivated dog or puppy, use their food. Start to teach them the foundations. If you're even just redoing the training with your dog, go back to the foundations, right? That's our sit, that's our stay, that's our come, you know, that's our wait. And then once they solidify those, move on to some of the more advanced stuff. And I say advanced, but you know, every dog's different, right? So age, there is no age restriction. Now, when we're gonna talk about duration of your training exercises, this will also sort of vary on how old and how engaged your dog is. So if you have a young puppy, you're going to want to stick your trainings to a couple minutes here or there. So you're not going to get those very long training sessions. You're not going to get those really long, um, you know, attention spans like maybe you would with a more mature dog. So you got to be very precise with the things you're going to practice and you have to do them more frequently. So little sessions, but more frequently throughout the day right? Most puppies, you're wanting to feed them three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Use each feeding time as a training time and then do little sessions in between, right? Your puppy is going to want to sleep most of the day. Puppies should sleep most of the day because they're growing. And 
when we are developing that connection with them, you know, we're developing that bond with them, the more interaction we're going to spend either training with them or, you know, going in and doing some observe observing with them, that's all going to build to that connection, all going to build to that bond. But we got to keep it short and sweet and we got to make it effective and you got to do it more frequently throughout the day. Now, so if you got a little bit more mature of a dog, you can get away with 15, 25 minute lessons, again, periodically throughout the day. Don't just save your training time to an hour or to the same time every day in the evening, all in one go. You are going to burn out with frustration and your dog is going to burn out with frustration. And if your dog burns out with frustration, you're going to be even more frustrated and you're not going to want to keep doing it. So do yourself and your dog a favor and keep your training sessions to 15, 25 minutes. If you can get a half hour of solid focus, try it. But most dogs, you're just not going to get that solid attention that you need to make the training effective. So keep it short and sweet, a little bit longer, you know, but periodically throughout the day, as much as you can, right? Because it's consistency. The more we interact with our dog, the more we ask our dog to focus and pay attention and, you know, do these things, the better our outcome is going to be. And if you got a really old dog, say you got a dog who is struggling in the hips, struggling in the elbows, you know, whatever sort of medical thing that you got going, adapt, right? Go back to just short training sessions. Take what you can get, make the most out of what you can get, and build from there, right? We don't have to get an hour of solid training in a row with your dog in order to make an impact. If you break that down into multiple different sessions throughout the day, you're going to get the results that you want. So it doesn't matter if they're, you know, a puppy, middle-aged, old, any dog will benefit from training. You just kind of have to play around a little bit with what you're going to cover, how long you're going to cover it, and where you're going to cover it. So that now leads us into, well, what do we even train our dogs? My firm belief is that your dog has to be solid on the foundational skills, right? When I go and I work with somebody, if their dog is not solid on the core foundational skills, which again are our sit, our stays, our comes, our weights, then we are going to cover those items even if their dog knows what they are, right? Because most of the time when I work with people, it's because their dog is either displaying a behavior they don't like or their dog is just refusing to listen to them. So we're going to take it back no matter what the dog is and get those core foundation skills solidified. We want fast response times. We want consistent and reliable response times, right? I don't care if your dog knows sit and, you know, say you got to say it 15 times in order to get your dog to listen. Great. They know it and they're choosing to ignore you, which tells me that that balance of them respecting you and, and you know, listening to what you're going to say is not quite there yet. So we're going to take it back and we are going to hound those foundational skills and it's going to drive you nuts and it might drive your dog nuts. But you know what? That's OK. It's OK to push yourself and your dog's boundaries to grow, right? You got to build your patience just as much as you're trying to enhance your dog. Like that's just matter of fact, you got to be okay with that. So you're going to cover the core foundational skills, right? When your dog gets really solid on that, what other areas do you feel you want your dog to succeed in? Most of the time people are going to want their dog to walk nicely on a leash. Nobody enjoys going outside, taking their dog on a walk and getting their arm yanked out of their socket or constantly having to pull against their dog's pressure to go sniff the next patch of grass or the tree or the hydrant or whatever it is. Um, so you're going to want to focus on that leash training with your dog, whether it's a puppy, you know, get them used to the collar and the leash, get them used to being walked around on it. If your puppy is starting to, to fight, want to listen to the leash, take it back a step, you know, just let the leash drag around them. Do not let them bite the leash, even your older dog. Don't let them bite the leash, okay? That, that's just, that's not what a leash is for. It's not a chew toy. It's a communicator. It's not a chew toy. So take it back a step and let your dog just 
drag the leash around. And then start to build up from there on, okay, you're dragging the leash around. Well, now I want you to follow me. And you gotta be patient. Again, it's all about building our patience just as much as it is about developing that communication and expectation with our dog. So teach him how to walk nicely on a leash. Get that loose leash walking. And you know, you, you're gonna have your your different kind of walks, right? You're gonna have your structured walk, which is where we have our nice next to you position. I like to work dogs in the heel position on the left side where they're staying by you. They don't have to necessarily be glued to my hip, but I don't want them pulling my arm. I don't want them losing focus on where I am and what I'm doing. And if I stop, you better believe they're going to be sitting their bum down. Um, so work your dog up to that level, right? And then exceed that level. Start to take things on a long leash. Let the long leash drag. Work on that off leash recall, you know? Get your dog comfortable with being by you and you not having your hands on the leash. Because, you know, agree with it or not, your dog is going to know the difference on if you're holding that leash and then if you're not, right? They're going to know that. They know that the leash is going to constrain them. And if you're not holding it, most of the time your dog's going to go for the first bit. So if your dog has a habit of that, get a long leash. Put that long leash on. If they start to bolt, put your foot down on that leash catch them off guard, reel them back in. So covering leash walking, absolutely. Kennel training. There's a lot of debate around kennel training. I am of the opinion that every single dog should be kennel trained. Now, does that mean I believe that every single dog needs to stay in the kennel at all times of the day? No. That means that every dog should have the ability to be in the kennel and calm down. There's a number of reasons why I think this is crucial for your dog. One, it's going to save you a lot of headaches because when you're potty training your puppy, you know, you're, you know, doing whatever and your dog decides to be naughty and you just need a break for 30 seconds, you got to be able to put your dog in an environment where you don't have to have your eye on them all the time and they're gonna not lose their mind, right? So you got to kennel train your dog, crate train your dog. You got to get them to be comfortable. You got to get them to relax and see it as an okay space, a safe space, right? So along with that, you know, it's important that your dog is kennel trained because if there's ever an emergency situation and your dog has to get in a kennel, they got to be more willing to get in there. Right? It's not going to be easy to get your dog into a kennel. You know, if something's going on, they're going to be losing it probably. But at least they will know what this thing is. Right? They will know what the devil they're going into because they've had that practice before. And again, when your young dog is learning, your puppy is learning, kennel train them. Teach them to be okay on their own. There's a whole number of things that you can do for kennel training. You know, we're going to make a YouTube video here soon on kennel training your dog because it is such an important skill that your dog needs to know how to do for safety, you know, for your own ability to to not lose your sanity and for your dog to learn that it's okay to be by themselves. That's why we're going to see a lot of separation anxiety in some dogs because they are constantly with their owners and they're never taught how to calm down on their own. So that is one of the top things that I would absolutely say to teach your dog. If it's not already kennel trained, teach it how to like the kennel. And if before you say, oh, well, my dog's too old for it. No, they're not. You are going to have to go through that process just as if they were a puppy, but they are not too old to learn how to be in a kennel. And they are not too young to learn how to be in a kennel. But again, the kennel is not for all hours of the day kind of thing. That is not what it's used for. It is a space for your dog to be able to get a break, for you to get a break, for your dog to feel safe and secure. And if in the event of an emergency and they're put into a kennel, that is one less stressor taken off of them. So just a couple things to focus on there with training. And, uh, you know, you're covering these core skills, um, but it's also a good idea to add, add some fun skills in there, right? You know, teaching your dog how to shake, teaching your dog how to, what I call, sit pretty, right? Where they sit on their back haunches and they put their feet up in the air. Um, Sometimes that one's a little bit of a concern depending on your dog's hips. So you always got to take that with a grain of salt and 
kind of evaluate your own personal dog on if you want to teach them that. You know, teach them to jump through a hoop, teach them to speak, teach them to um, play dead, you know, whatever it is. There's a number of fun little tricks that you can teach your dog um, to get that engagement. Again, we want to build this relationship. So get that engagement with your dog and teach them some fun tricks to get them to use their mind, use their brain to associate this action with this word and you just do it randomly throughout the day and then when they get it well now you got a fun thing to show off with your friends but you also have a fun way to interact with your dog so teaching them some tricks absolutely and then when you advance or or you feel like your dog is ready get into some more specialty training right teach your dog some scent work Scent work is an amazing thing that you can do with your dog because it's going to utilize their brain. It's going to utilize their oral factory senses. You know, it is going to get them thinking and working. And it, it is a process to teach your dog how to scent train. But when you start to see the light bulb go off in, in your dog's head and you start to see the progress that your dog is making with that scent training, it's really cool to see. Um, and you're going to find that your dog is going to be tired afterwards after a couple sessions of scent training they're going to be tired because that is how much engagement and involvement is in there or if you don't want to do scent training you know teach your dog some fast cat there's uh that's a, a agility um course uh you teach your dog to do some fat fast cat uh activities you know teach your dog to do some main act agility coursework, you know, teach your dog on the fundamentals for the obedience rallies. There's, there's all kinds of things that you can do with your dog out there. You just got to kind of explore a little bit, see what's going to fit your lifestyle the most and see what your dog is going to take interest in. There's, you know, not every dog is going to enjoy the same thing, right? If I were to take Coda, which is my border collie blue healer puppy, well, she's not a puppy anymore. Although I do think every dog is a puppy. Let's, we'll just get that straight. When I say dog and puppy, it's kind of synonymous. Um, Coda is really in on the uh, retrieving, which is funny because she's not a retriever, but she loves fetch. She loves to retrieve. So we're going to utilize that in our training sessions. She wants this ball. Well, guess what? She's got to do a couple of things before I will give her this ball. And then Remy, who is my border collie something mix, she loves food. She is very food motivated. She loves treats and she still likes to play a little bit, but I'm going to take what I know my dogs enjoy and I'm going to try to find the best engagement that I can get with them because involving those things, right? You got to find what your dog enjoys. You got to find what makes your dog tick and you got to use that to your advantage. So when I am teaching, you know, a dog to retrieve, I want that bumper or that ball, whatever it is that we're using, I want that to be the greatest thing in the world for them. And they are only going to get this item when we are retrieving. And it's very important that when you're working on it, leave your dog on a high note, okay? Leave your dog on a high note with whatever it is that you're using for training or that you're doing with training. Leave them wanting more. You want them to be engaged and interact, enthused, you know, all that kind of stuff. Leave them wanting more because then the next time you come around and you do it, they're gonna be super excited and it just builds from there. So there's a number of different things that you can do with your dog, training wise. But the big takeaway is just start, start now. Make that commitment to start training your dog today. You know, if you have just gotten a new puppy, start training them today. The second you bring them home, get them used to a kennel. You know, there's certain ways to go about doing that. So if you don't know, try to find some resources on how to tell you, you know, what to do, show you what to do. Again, we're going to be making some of those YouTube videos uh, on our Great Starts Dog Training channel. Um, you know, just start now. It doesn't matter if you got an old dog, you got a young dog, you got a middle-aged dog. It doesn't matter. The only way that you are going to start to see the benefits is if you start. I mean, that's it's redundant to say, right? It's a little silly, like, duh, to say, but that's the fact of the matter. You gotta start training your dog right away, and you gotta make it consistent with your day-to-day -day life. You gotta make it apply to things within your day-to-day -day life, and you need to just ingrain it, not only in your dog's routine, but in your routine. 
because our dogs are only going to be as good as we are. If we don't give them the interaction that they need, if we don't give them the stimulation that they need, then that's on us. That's our fault. So we want to help our dogs be their best. We want to have a very good relationship with our dogs. Get on that training, you know, start working with them, whether you just brought your dog home or you've had your dog for a long time, just start doing something with them. And if you need some help, you need some, you know, more hands-on direction, reach out to a professional trainer in your area. If you're in the Treasure Valley area in, in Idaho, we would love to help you develop a plan and, you know, get a routine set up on working with your dog. You can reach us on our website, greatstartsdogtraining.com, on our social medias, um, or just keep an eye out for our YouTube videos. You know, there's lots of resources out there, but the biggest thing is to just start. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you guys receive some insight and some value out of this, and we will see you on the next one.